Let's take a, a, as an ex a particular computational problem as an example. Let's take the, pr the problem of, of coloring a graph. So a graph is just a, a structure where you have a set of points called vertices and uh, lines called edges connecting them. So it's a pattern of interconnections between the vertices. And um, if you're given a graph, you can ask the following question. Can you put a color on each vertex, either red, blue, or green, in such a way that no two vertices that are joined by an edge have the same color? That's called the graph coloring problem. So there are a couple of things to note about this problem. Um, the first thing to note is that there are really an infinite number of instances of this problem, because you can be given any graph of any size. And any number of colors to... And any number of colors, but for simplicity, let's just say red, blue, and green. Three, okay. So then there's a decision problem. Uh, for which graphs can you actually assign the colors so that you never get two greens adjacent to each other or two reds or blues adjacent to each other? How could you prove that the graph was, could be colored? Well, you could prove it very easily. You could just exhibit the coloring and anybody could check. So, so this is an example of, a, first of all, a combinatorial problem, combinatorial decision problem. It has the property that a, a brute force approach would be to just try all possible assignments of the colors, and that would be hugely expensive. So, so the obvious way to attack the problem would lead to a, a tremendous combinatorial explosion in the running time of the algorithm. So the question is, uh, is, is there uh, uh, an algorithm that can reliably answer this question of whether the graph can be colored properly with three colors while running rapidly? And our notion of rapid computation um, is by convention uh, the, the property that the running time grows as some fixed power of the size of the graph rather than uh, exponentially in the size of the graph. In other words, if, if the running time doubled every time you had one more vertex. Or tripled, as is the case with, with the coloring problem. Or tripled, as is the case with the brute force approach to the coloring problem. That's called exponential time, and that's not satisfactory. So we're looking for something that runs uh, in, uh, in time proportional to the number of vertices or the square or the third power or some fixed power of the number of vertices. So we have uh, many, many such problems and we would like to classify them. We would like to identify those problems that can be solved in polynomial time. And we have a name for that class of problems. We call it P for polynomial. Now, you could also um, ask, uh, for, for which problems is there a quick way of demonstrating, once you have found it, you know, once you've decided that it's solvable, a quick way of demonstrating that it's solvable? Well, in the case of, of, the, of, the, of the coloring problem, that's easy. You just exhibit the coloring. So the class of problems where there's a quick way of presenting a solution once you have it is called NP for non-deterministic polynomial time. I won't explain why the term non-deterministic is appropriate, but that's, that's what we call it. So it turns out that the great majority of the combinatorial problems that arise um, in applications, whether in pure mathematics or in scheduling factories or designing computer chips or uh, making timetables for schools or dispatching taxi cabs or an enormous number of everyday problems, packing uh, your suitcases into the trunk of your car. Analyzing programs, which was the, which was the subject of your yeah. thesis. Yeah. Yeah. Analyzing programs. There's this vast terrain of combinatorial uh, decision problems and related also so-called optimization problems. Most of them, if they're formulated as yes-no decision problems, like can you or can you not color the graph with three colors, most of them lie in this class 
of non-deterministic polynomial time problems. Indeed. It's interesting that the property is not symmetric, so it's easy to demonstrate that a graph can be colored with three colors, but there's no obvious way, and in fact no way known, to succinctly demonstrate that it cannot be colored with three colors. Taking a slight technical liberty, NP represents essentially all of the usually arriving, uh, the, the combinatorial problems that arise in practice. And, and um, within that, there is P, the seemingly much smaller class of problems for which we have polynomial time algorithms rather than exponential time algorithms. So there are many problems that are in P, the problem of sorting a list of numbers, the problem of finding a, a shortest path through a graph, uh, the, the network flow problems that we talked about earlier are examples of problems that are in the class P, but these are really exceptional. The great majority of the problems that arise in applications and which lie properly described in NP do, do not appear to have such polynomial time algorithms. Uh, the great majority of problems that we have to solve in practice uh, don't appear to be in the class P, but we have at the present time no proof of that. It still remains a legitimate possibility that P is equal to NP, that, that the class of problems that can be solved efficiently um, is the same as the class of problems that can be verified efficiently once you have found a solution. Uh, nobody, the, none of us, I think, really believe that those two classes are the same. I mean, uh, if the two classes were the same, it would be tantamount to, to saying that finding a proof is as easy as verifying a proof, which violates all of our intuitions about mathematics. But at the present time, there, there is no rigorous demonstration that the classes P and NP are different from each other, and that's generally considered the... Um, the biggest open problem in computer science and maybe one of the half dozen most significant open problems in all of mathematics. Mm -hmm. And in fact, among the open problems in mathematics, it may be the one that has the greatest philosophical significance because it deals with the, the very nature of proof and whether uh, finding a solution is harder than mm -hmm. exhibiting a solution.